Okay, I uh, had promised one of my viewers that I would uh, show some knife work being done, but only show the mixing area. I don't have two cameras, split screen, all that stuff. I won't get into it, but uh, I'll just give you a quick overview of yeah, I guess the little idiosyncrasies that I have when I'm mixing when I'm mixing colors and. Uh, Take it from there. I'm doing the shady side of a cloud in the sky that I was working on yesterday. See, too much white. I want to go a little more purple. So a little cobalt blue and a lizard crimson. That's pretty reddish yet. That's just fine. I like that. That might be too dark. a little bit dark so we'll just steal some of the white from there trying to avoid over mixing things don't want to kill those colors before they leave the palette remember when you're when you're applying your your color to the canvas it's becoming even more mixed on the canvas It's a lighter spot, so I'll add some yellow ochre to that. And a little more white. A hint of the lizard and crimson. Yellow ochre. Working my way lighter yet. Now just yellow ochre and white. See, so I keep working into the same area and working dark to light, you know, working from my shady, shady area into the light. Um, I've, I've added various colors, but as I go lighter, I just add to that same pile. It does slightly mix in the other, the other colors that I, that I had in there already, contaminates them a little bit. That's fine. That, in a way, keeps them married to the same, you know, the fresh color that I'm putting on, it keeps them married to the colors that were there already. And I'm not, I'm not killing it on the pile, on the, on the, on the palette here. I'm not killing those colors. Okay, now I'm just gonna give my knife a wipe because I'm going to just put a little bit of a little spot on my cloud that has almost direct sunlight on it. So I'm just going to use yellow ochre. I'm trying to remove almost, well, all the pure white. I don't like just pure white. If I'm going to use pure white, I will still tend to add a touch of yellow ochre or maybe a touch of cadmium yellow pale just to warm it up a, a, a tad. I just, personally, I'm not fond of pure white. It's too cold for my liking. All right, that was good enough. Needed to be there, but it's also partly for reference. Okay, now I'm pretty sure that just staring down at a palette 
is going to get a bit boring if you don't see progress on the painting at the same time. So what I'll do now is I'll just change the camera angle a little so that you can see what I've been doing or where I've been working on the painting rather. So it's just been this area that I, that I finished. I started against this cloud edge that I did yesterday. I started with the darker purples, you know, uh, raw umber, alizarin crimson, cobalt blue. Came a little warmer with just adding a bit of white and a bit of yellow ochre. And then we put in a little bit of uh, yellow ochre and alizarin crimson and white. And then a couple of spots here where I took a little bit from of, of this pile and I, and, I, and I put it on. It's not the lightest that it's going to go, but it's very close to it. So that sort of helps to, well, I'm keying in my colors is what I'm doing. Makes for good reference as I, as I finish this, this cloudy area here.